people in this country who have their doubts about whether a space program is necessary in the first place, let alone a lunar colony. I've prepared a few remarks, and I'll take any questions you care to ask. Feel free to jump right in. I'd like to keep this as informal as possible. Our first job was to dig trenches for the units and cover them with soil, burying them in the cheapest, easiest way to protect them from radiation. They're not much to look at, but they're cozy, sort of like living in a mobile home. I hope that the second team up there now finds them as comfortable as we did. How were things powered? Is that what you're asking? We had solar receptors that we assembled. And right now, they provide power only for the residential units and the computer systems, but they will furnish the energy for every stage of the two-year colonization operation. But, you know, other than that, what I missed most was being outside. It's something we take for granted, but when you've spent three months in an enclosed space where every time you go outside you have to wear a complete life support system, <laughs> believe me, you think about it. It's really something to feel the sun on your face, the way the wind tugs at your clothes and hair. Even on an overcast day like today, there's something wonderful about the way the moisture in the air feels so soft against your skin. But yes? Oh, hi! How are you? You're from Omni, right? Well, nice to see you again. What was your question? When? During the launch or just in general? Well, not scared exactly, but tense, charged up, excited. Fear isn't something you really think about. Of course, we never forget that danger is always present. We don't forget the Apollo or Challenger crews or the Soviet cosmonauts who have died. We know it could happen to any of us, but you figure whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You just do your best and try not to worry. Well, I didn't mind being the only woman on the team. In some ways, I'm more comfortable with men than I'm with women. Most of my friends are men. Oh, no, not really. I've known women who've complained of discrimination. I personally have never experienced it. Well, maybe it's happened to them. I don't know. I honestly don't feel anyone's ever held me back because I was a woman. But maybe it's happened to them. On the other hand, maybe they just didn't have the determination to get what they wanted. Well, my dad, for one, if you want to talk about role models, I'd say he was the biggest influence on me. He always told me I could be anything I wanted, as long as I was willing to work for it. He was a professor of engineering at Texas A&M. Without him, I don't think I would have ever thought of joining the space program. And Daddy's a real character. He's always been fascinated by technology. This is the most exciting time in history to be alive, he would tell us. He had the first VCR, the first PC, the first CD player. He was the first guy on the internet. You get the picture, right? We were up to our eyebrows in the state of our gadgetry. He bought my mom a microwave oven when they first came out, but she never really used it. She put her coffee in there to heat it up. 400 bucks for hot water, Dad used to say. <laughs> it was Dad who kept us up in all the activities of the space program. Took us to see the space centers in Houston and Florida. Well, Houston was right near home. We went there about once a year. The Smithsonian Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. 
I remember the day we went through the moon landing exhibit there. You know, the one with the Apollo lunar module. I remember I said to him that afternoon, Dad, someday I'll go to the moon too. He just laughed, but I guess I showed him. No, I'm real sorry, but I just didn't have that many women role models. In fact, I can't think of any. There weren't too many women in the hard sciences when I was coming up. Even NASA didn't start recruiting women and minorities until 1978. What journal did you say you're from? Biz Magazine. Well, that's very nice. I mean, I I'm sure it goes without saying that I believe all women should be treated equally. Equal pay and so forth. I have peers I respect very much. Shannon Lucid and Eileen Collins and women like that. No one you could really call a role model. I really wish I could help you out if you're looking for an angle or something, but the most important mentors I've had have always been men. My mom, no, not really. And my mom was a wonderful woman, but I don't think I can honestly say she's what you call a role model. I'm not too much like her when you get right down to it. She was, I'd say, very much the traditional type. I mean, she had a good mind. She could have done lots of things with her life if she wanted. For years, my dad tried to get her to do something else with herself. Like get in a real estate license, or sell an Avon, or even doing volunteer work. You need something to fulfill you, he'd tell her. You ought to have work of your own that you love. She always tried her best, bless her heart, because she adored him, but she never stuck with anything for very long. All she wanted to do was to bake us cookies and put her around in her garden. You should have seen this crazy garden she had. It took up half our property. She had beans and tomatoes and sweet corn and okra and God knows what all. She was always growing something because of the warm climate. She used to put stuff up, rhubarb, strawberry jam. She had a small orchard, and she even had a little vineyard, and made her own wine from the grapes. It wasn't that bad, either. And all around the house, there were flowers whose names I never bothered to learn in every color and shape. I don't know how she found that time she spent on that garden. Five of us, she was always driving somebody someplace. The dentist, softball practice, student government. She was always up before the rest of us. Out in the garden, working, watching the sky for rain clouds. She was in her own world out there. Anyway, I decided I would never be happy in that kind of life. Just a wife and a mother. I knew even when I was little, I wanted a career of my own. I decided to become a scientist like Dad. The first colonists on Mars will be much more isolated. Now Mars is an instance where astronaut gender is a relevant issue. Mars is six months to two years traveling time from Earth, so when we send a mission there, we'll probably establish a permanent base on the first expedition. This means that a small group of explorers, 15 people or so, will be isolated for a period of several years. We have to give careful thought to possible sexual problems in that situation, the pressure to pair off, male-female ratios, and so forth. We're still conducting studies on places like Antarctica, where other small groups of male and female scientists are living in isolation. That should help us with our choosing the first team to go. You know, I am glad you brought up the subject of role models earlier. I didn't mean to give you such a hard time about it. It's times like these when I'm feeling very proud of everything our team achieved up there and also feeling very grateful to be safe at home again. It's good to stop and think about all the people who encouraged me and made it possible for me to grow and achieve. I owe a lot to other people. Besides my dad, there was my first CO in the Air Force, Major Gerald Hammerham. He encouraged me to continue my education when I joined the service after college. And Professor Ramsey and Artificial Intelligence at MIT. And, of course, my husband, Dr. Rick Griffith. 
Rick and I met during our training at NASA. Oh, heck yes, I'd like to go to Mars. Wouldn't you? I don't understand these people who think the space program is a waste of time and money. Of course, it's important to feed the world. At our level of civilization, no one should be starving. But exploration is food for the soul. When the Challenger crew blew up, we all felt that there had been a death in our family. Not just NASA, and not just the country, but, but I mean the whole world. We all felt our dreams died with those astronauts. Our idea of ourselves, the idea of reaching for the impossible and making it. This is what feeds us. Hope is what we live for. Oh my God, just, just think of it. We're starting all over. Think of the new discoveries, the new responsibilities. It's all very well to talk about all the oxygen and hydrogen and aluminum and titanium waiting for us up there, but, but we can't just go marauding across the moon, strip mining everything in sight. We want to protect places like the Straight Wall and the Taco Crater just because they are awesome works of nature. It's hard to describe. You've seen pictures of the moon, but nothing prepares you for what it's like. The word desert isn't enough to describe it. There's nothing like it on Earth. The only color visible is our planet in space, possibly far away, just a swirl of blue and white. The water planet. You feel so exposed. With no atmosphere, there's Nothing to shelter you from the endless space. Nothing to break your view until your eyes reach the horizon. And the planet seems to drop off abruptly into emptiness. Not even a Texas prairie mesquite tree. And those damn things can thrive any place on a little sunshine and a hell of a lot of nerve. Before I left, I spent the day out there with the Land Rover. I was collecting specimens from different rock formations and soil samples from all across the northern hemisphere of the moon. The soil it was dry, like powder, ashes. Ancient volcanic rock pulverized to dust by thousands of years of solar wind and micrometeorites. In some places, the dust is 30 feet thick. No moisture, no light. It made me think of my mother. I wanted to smell the dirt in my hands the way I'd seen her do. When I left, they were just starting to build the first greenhouse. Soil analysis show that moon dirt is tillable. In time, we hope that the lunar colony will be self-supporting, actually capable to produce the food to feed its population. Can you believe that? I brought a bag of it back with me. I wish. I wish I could take it to her. Say, here, Mom. If anyone can do it, you can. Let's see what you can grow with this.